What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodyV.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use combo boxes with a designer for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at combo boxes, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodyV.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee, it's just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the very beginning of this playlist, video number two, I actually talked about combo boxes, but we did it manually before we learned how to use the designer. So in this video, I want to show you how to use them with the designer. It's a little bit different, probably easier doing it this way, but it is, like I said, a little different from that video. If you want to learn just a bunch of stuff about combo boxes, go back and watch that video. It's video two in this playlist. Uh, but you don't have to to watch this video. We're going to run right through the basics today. So we've got this thing. We can pick something. We click a button. Boom, it does something. I'll also show you how to just click it and have it do something as well. We'll look at both of those things in this video. I don't think I talked about that in the first video I did months ago in video two. So uh, this can be a little bit different than that video. So let's head over to the terminal here. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this PyQt5 series. So, okay, I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. Let's open up the designer. So we just type designer, boom, pops right up. And we want to create a main window like always. Let me resize this a bit. All right. And we can come through here and just very quickly build out a little GUI here. I'll do something like that. And then we want a combo box. Hold that up. And we also want a button, so that's going to be a push button, something like that. And let's just kind of make this a little bigger, do a little something, something, do something like that. There we go. And I'm going to come through here and let's change the size of some stuff here. So let's make this text a little bigger. Let's make it 16. And let's come down here and say select item from combo box, dot, 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 something like that. Good enough. Same thing here. I want to change this size of this to 16 just to make it a little easier to read. And then let's come down here and let's just say, I don't know, select or something like that. And same thing here. I want to, let's see, come up here and change the size of this guy as well, the text to 16. And then I'm going to come up here to the size uh, geometry, I guess, and click this little arrow to boom, kind of resize that to 16 font, make this a little bigger. Uh, same thing here, boom, that a little bigger. Okay, something like that. So pretty basic little thing here. And if we want to come up here to form and preview, just to kind of take a look. Okay, good enough. So let's come up here now and go file, save as, and I want to save this in my C PyQt5 directory. I'm just going to call this dropdown.ui. Okay, so now we want to convert that UI file to a Python file like we always do. So let's go py uic 5 x and we want to call dropdown.ui. We want a dash O to output that. That's a letter O, not a zero. And we want to call this dropdown.py. Okay, so now let's run this Python dropdown.py just to make sure that worked. And all right, we've got our little layout here and everything looks good. So now let's head back over to our Sublime Text Editor and let's open up that new Python file. So let's go open file. We're in our C PyQt5 directory and we called that dropdown.py. So here it is, get rid of those things. Okay, and this is our basic starter code that we always have. So First thing I'm going to do is come down here to the find the button and here it is push button. And at the end of this, let's add clicked, set that equal to a lambda, L-A-M-B-D-A. And that's a lowercase l. I know it looks like a capital L, but it's a lowercase l. And now let's just create a little function. I'm going to call it self dot, I don't know, clicker, something like that. It gets called every time we press the button. So, okay, now we need to create that little function. So I'm going to come down here any old where down here. And like we've done many times before, let's create that. We want to pass in self as always. And now when we click this button, we want something to happen on the screen. Let's change the label to something else. So we can go self.label. 
dot set text. We've done this many, many times and create a little F string. And let me say you picked, uh, for now, let's just say something. And we're calling self dot label because up here, that's what our label is called. You can see right here, label. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. So Python drop down dot pi, and we got our app here. When we click this button, it says you picked something. We still don't have anything in the combo box, but at least the button works. So let's add something to the combo box. Super easy, head back over to our sublime text editor. And then just up here where everything's being defined, and let's say right here or so, add items to combo box. And there's several different ways you can do this. Like I said, go back and watch that other video if you wanna see a number of different ways. I'll talk about a couple of easy, quick ways here. But the first thing we can do is just call self dot combo box. Actually, this should be capital B. And that's because up here, that's what it's called combo box. We only have one. So I didn't rename it to anything. This is the default name combo box. If you had more than one and you would have to have different names, but we only have one. So it's combo box. So self dot combo box dot add item. And then we can just add an item. So pepperoni, for instance. So notice lowercase a, uppercase i. So we can just sort of grab several of these. And let's say we also want mushroom pizza toppings we're gonna do here. Uh, cheese and I don't know, onion, something like that. So now let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. So Python drop down dot pi. And you see now we've got things in our combo box. Uh, when we select one, nothing actually happens yet. We click the button that still says you pick something. So now we want whatever we selected to show up where it says something. So we can do that super easy head back over here. And to get the thing that's selected, we can come down here. And instead of saying you pick something, we can pass in a variable. What do we want to pass in? Well, self dot combo box capital B dot and let's just get the current text. Right? So that should do it. Let's go ahead and run that. See if that worked. So if we pick cheese, click select, you pick cheese. Uh, if we go onion, you picked onion, right? Pepperoni, you pick pepperoni. Now, that's sort of a tedious way to do it. We can also add a list instead of doing those things one at a time. You know, up here, we did one, two, three, four of these things. Instead, we could add a list. So let's go my underscore toppings. And let's just create a list, just a regular Python list. So here we can do and I'm already out of pizza toppings. Uh, ham, I guess is one right? Uh, pineapple? Is that how you spell pineapple? I don't know. <laughs> What's another topping? Oh, let's just go supreme, supreme pizza. All right. So now we've got this list, right? And we can add them in the same way here, but slightly different. We can go self dot combo box dot add items. Notice the plural here. And here we can just pass in my toppings. Now we can pass in the variable name or we can actually just sort of copy this whole thing and do it like that. That seems a little silly, much better just to do it like that. And it'll it'll work the same way. So let's save this Come back over here, run this. And now we have ham, pineapple and supreme. And that's maybe an easier way to do it if you've got a lot of stuff. If you've got a lot of uh, you know items to add to your combo box, that works like that. So okay, this works now fine by selecting the button by clicking the button. But what if we just kind of click on here and click pepperoni? How do we get it to update automatically without clicking the button? Well, we can do that too, fairly easily. So I'm going to come back up here. And right here, let's say, what would we comment this? Make combo box clickable? Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> right. So to do that, we can call the activated function. And to do that, we go self dot combo box dot activated dot connect. And now inside of here, we call self dot whatever we want to happen when it's activated. And by activated, it means you clicked on it and made a selection, right? You selected something. So let's just run the same exact function. Let's see. What did we call it? Clicker. So we could do that. We could just call self dot clicker. 
And notice you do not put the function parentheses like you would normally when you call a function. You just go self.clicker. So now if we save this, come back over here, run it one more time, we can see if we click cheese, boom, you pick cheese. If we go ham, boom, you picked ham. You notice I'm not clicking the button. I'm just clicking on the combo box itself. Boom, you pick pineapple. So two different ways you could do it, just depending on your program, your program flow, which one you want to work. If you want a button, use a button. If you don't want a button, do it this second way that I just showed you, uh, but very cool. So like I said, there's other things you could do with combo boxes. Go back and watch that video. I talked about a few other things, adding different items and stuff like that. Uh, but this is the gist of it. Most of the stuff you're gonna need is right like this and uh, pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com and I'll see you in the next video.